Hi, this is Rochelle with Scrap Craftastic, and I've received requests to show how I make my loaded page markers. Um, here's an example of one, and I'll link a video to some other examples so that you can see exactly what they are. But it, they usually have a clear pocket on one side and a paper pocket on the other side, and it basically just slides into your traveler's notebook. Um, just to mark your page and you can also have these clipped on here you can also use a binder clip on the side to hold your pen um, you can put the elastic ribbon on and just stick your pen down in the ribbon or you could just stick your pen into let's see if I got this one too close down into the clip like that to hold your pen so and then this would just slide into your traveler's notebook so I'm gonna quickly show you how I make these and for the sake of the video I've already picked out my pieces now I'm using just scrap pieces of leftover cardstock it's not a really heavy cardstock um, and I suggest using a lighter weight cardstock for this or scrapbooking paper not the actual paper version but this is cardstock it's just not the really thick quality so and that's what I use to make them I cut them down to the size of page marker that I want in this instance I want mine to fit in a B6 traveler's notebook so I've already cut the paper down to 5 by 7 and I need two sheets I need a front side and a back side so that my page marker will have um, pattern paper or design on both sides so that's five Oop, can't use that side of the ruler by seven now once the once you laminate this you're gonna have about a quarter of an inch more width so if you don't want any overhang in your traveler's notebook you might want to trim this down slightly smaller then five by seven especially as far as the width it's really a matter of preference um, I don't mind it sticking out a little bit because it's easier to find where my page is and also it allows for the pen to stick out a little bit more if I use the binder clip on the side so here is another example of a page marker this is another b6 and as you can see even though I measured the paper at 5 by 7 it still has a little extra width for the um the seal area of the laminate so and then here's another pocket this one has two clear pockets um, so this is how it kind of looks once you put it in your notebook, I'm going to take this off because originally this was on here. And it sticks in your notebook like that and then your pen would be in this loop like that. So, And that's like with everything. I mean, if you trim it down, you won't have as much overhang. It's really just a personal preference thing. So, and I really love this page marker. I wish I, I could use it all year long, but <laughs> it was just perfect. Anyway, to get started, you could use uh, for your second pocket. I usually like to make mine at least two, two and a half inches tall on the bigger page markers, the bigger sizes like um, B6 or standard size or even A5. So this would be five inches wide by two and a half inches tall okay so I'm gonna put my pieces together I've made sure they're as even cut as evenly as I could get them so my main two pieces I'm just gonna add some ATG tape some dry tape this works better with a double sided style tape um, you don't have to 
put your pieces together but it makes it easier to line things up when I'm running it through the laminator so I take them together like this and as you can see I have a little bit of overhang so I'm just going to trim that off let's use a paper trimmer to do it just going to trim off that little bit of excess So there we have it. It's double sided. This, this piece was a scrap because I had accidentally cut off the word the at the top. But I'm going to use it for me because I still like the way it looks. So there's my front and back. Then this is another piece of scrap that I have that I'm using to make the pocket. And of course since I trimmed off that little bit it's going to be a little too wide here. So I'll trim that off after. I put it on what I want to do is take my tape and just go along the bottom edge what will be the bottom edge of the pocket that way when you stick any papers in there it won't slide through and peek out of the laminate and you'll see what I mean in a minute then I'm just going to line that up with the bottom of my page marker as best as I can and with the side so now we have this little flip piece once you put the laminate it's going to seal the sides but I want to cut off this little excess piece here and I'm just going to cut that off with my scissors just to trim it up neatly okay so now we have our front and our back glued together. We have the beginnings of our pocket. Now we don't have our clear pocket on the back. What I normally use to do my clear pockets is Duralar. And I do my clear pocket about basically the same way as the paper pocket. However, I make it a little shorter in width. So since this is 5 inches wide, I would make my pocket four and a half inches wide. It gives me a quarter of an inch on either side. Um, it's just easier to do it that way so that things aren't peeking out when you when you stuff the pocket that they aren't peeking out of the side. Now if you don't have Duralar and I always keep all of my extra little pieces just for this purpose. So I have this strip here that normally I would just cut and use. But if you don't have that you can also use an already sealed piece of laminate. So this is just some excess laminate from something that I laminated. And I keep the extra pieces. And so I can trim this down to fit to make my own um, clear pocket. So I'm just going to guesstimate about what size I want. You don't want to make the pockets too deep because you you won't be able to reach down in there and get small items if they fall down. So it's they're pretty shallow pockets. I'm going to make this two by four and a half. So I'm going to go ahead and trim that down. And I'm just going to use the best looking part of this laminate. So I'm going to do, let's just go do two and a quarter. Two and a quarter by four and a half. And I'm going to cut off this side that has the rounded edge because we don't want that. So four and a half. So just making sure that it's clean, no lint, dust. And this is a tricky part. So I'm just laying it on here to make sure of my positioning where I want it to fall. Okay, before I, this will get adhered once it's laminated. We don't put any tape on this piece. 
before I run it through my laminator, I want to go ahead and round my corners. So I'm going to take my corner chomper and round my corners. You don't have to round corners. It's just a personal preference. But always put the bottom pocket on first, the paper pocket, before you do your rounding. Because you want to get that chomp at the same time. So I'm going to round my corners. Okay. And I'm going to get my laminate sheet out. I'm done with the glue gun for now. Open it up. And I'm going to place the paper side down the paper pocket side down now you can embellish this as well if you want let me show you you could put a project life card here you could put a little page flag laminate a little page flag on there um, for example here's a, a project life card so I could you know put that there I could put some kind of very thin dye text, anything, um, sticker, anything you want. Like I have these, um, let's try something. I have these rose gold stickers from Dollar Tree and since this is like a rose gold down here, I could probably put that on there. Let's use this one. These are wall decals, actually, not stickers, but they're kind of the same thing. Um, if I can get it off, there we go. Okay, so this is just to show you that you can do whatever you want, change it up however you want. I don't know how well this is going to show up on this pattern paper, but. So we just put a sticker down. You can still go over. As long as it, when you're adding embellishments to this, you want them to be as flat as possible. So, and these wall decals from Dollar Tree are pretty flat. So, and then I could like put a flag banner here. Anything you want. Just make sure you do all of that. The permanent decorations that you want before you laminate it and keep it keep it thin don't make them too bulky so again I'm gonna put the paper pocket side down into the laminate pouch if I can get it open Now I'm going to put it all the way to the edge in this case, but I want to leave room at the top and the bottom so that I have room for error and room to trim. Then I'm going to take my laminate piece, the clear piece, and line it up, position it where I want it on the base of the page marker close this up now I don't want to waste all this laminate and I know I can use this to make more pockets but I do happen to want to laminate some die cuts so I'm going to add some of my die cuts here so that they can be laminated at the same time and that kind of cuts down on the waste I'm just going to put my other little pieces in here. Just making sure that I don't get too close to my page marker. And these are items that I can, I think I'll leave her out, that I can use to load my page marker once it's done. So I'm leave a good amount of space. I think I'll add one more bow. add this 
and again this isn't a requirement I just want to have some laminated pieces to load my page marker with okay I like to slip a piece of chipboard underneath my laminate pouch just to help feed it carefully through the laminator I also make sure my laminator is extremely hot make sure my pocket didn't move and I feed it through okay so it goes through and it seals your pockets up of course my little pieces have been laminated so I'm just going to go ahead and cut those away and I'll be fussy cutting those out later so this is my page mark I'm going to run it through again just for good measure um, just to make sure that it's good and sealed to the paper so I'm going to flip it over on the other side and run it through again and I'll depending on the paper and how confident I am in the seal I may run it through two or three times but I'll run it through twice this first time and then I'm going to go through and open my pockets and you'll need a blade you could use um, an open pair of scissors to do this but you need some type of blade and I use my metal ruler to open the pockets let's put that aside I'm gonna go ahead and trim off the excess laminate we don't want to cut, cut too close to the paper because we have a seal that goes around the paper and that's the air bubble outside of the seal is right up against the paper and if you cut into that then you will open up your laminate and we don't want to do that so I kind of know where to line my laminate up on my paper trimmer to cut it so that it's not going to break that seal but I can cut it pretty close so, just trim off the excess then I'll come back in with my corner rounders and round the laminate corner because it's really sharp you don't want to leave those sharp edges on there okay now I'm gonna go in with my ruler and open up my pocket with the blade what I like to do is put the ruler on the opposite side of the pocket line it up because it's easier to see that way don't I don't go too close to the edge I try to stay in the middle and just do a light stroke to open the pocket and you can feel when that blade hits the paper so there we go you don't have to press down hard it's just a really light stroke now the thing with this is when you use the paper the inside of your pocket is not laminated having it laminated on the outside keeps the paper on the inside sturdy so it, it still won't rip okay then we turn around on the other side and again I like to have my ruler on the opposite side from the pocket that way you can see that air bubble while you're cutting and you can line your ruler up to the air bubble and you take your blade again I don't go too close to the edge and just run it down that line of that air bubble that the pocket creates 
and then it opens right up. So now you have a clear pocket. And I just use laminate to make that clear pocket. So now I've opened my pockets, I've trimmed the edges, I've rounded the corners. I'm going to run it through the laminator again. Now, make sure you run it through with pocket side first, not this way, because it is possible for the laminator to catch on these pockets now that they're open and crush your paper or get stuck in the laminator. So I always do the bottom side first where the pocket is sealed so that the roller just goes over it instead of against the pocket if that makes sense just bottom first <laughs> and there you have it now there are tons of variations you can do with this um you could put a eyelet in the top and tie a ribbon on you can put an eyelet on the side and make a nice little dangle or um, tassel hang on the side I mean the possibilities are endless as far as how you decorate and embellish it what I've done is usually I just add some of my die cuts in um, the, the Christmas one I showed you has a ton of die cuts um, you could even add stickers on here. I'm going to take her out. I've, I've added removable tape on some of my die cuts just to keep them in there. Um, so you can just like load them up like this. Like so. Oops. Just put her back on top. Um, look, I have some washi cards in here. I'm going to take my, this is just a um, freebie from, I think it was from Planner Cuteness on Facebook. So you could just add your die cuts in, load your pockets up, and you're all set to go. So that's how you do it. You can do two clear pockets. Um, on both sides. You can do paper pockets on both sides. I just would make sure not to use too thick of a card stock um, and you should be good to go. So if you have any questions please leave them in the comments below. I hope this helps anyone who's trying to make their own page marker. Thanks for watching and I'll talk to you later. Bye!